All right, let's see if we can get a little bit more continuation here on ABUS. For some reason, my trades aren't showing up. I was going to start the recap video, but I figured let's get a little bit more trade again with ABUS climbing right now. All-time highs on the five-minute big resistance here at 6.2. Also at like 5.9, I think we broke nicely above that. So let's see if we can keep running. Um, obviously, $6 is a big resistance zone, but if we break this, we can see a quick move to 8, so I want to keep a close eye on it right now. 5 minute, looks really good around 570, 580. Just trying to be a little bit more patient here. But right now, it's, it's a pretty strong ticker. Oh, okay. Boom, there's the breakout at six. Let's see if we can get to continuation. I'm gonna trade with small size just to get myself a little bit here in the habit of trading. Um, sometimes I start sandbagging and not doing anything. Small size, well, I didn't even get filled. Yeah, there's this This ticker is powerful. Let's see if we get an entry on the retest, new minute and a couple seconds here, five seconds. Really powerful ticker. This was that earlier resistance zone we were looking at. I'm almost not getting any of my entries filled because I'm being just a tad bit too cautious. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of a dip this time. There we go. Small size, really small size. Five minutes really extended, so I was trying to be patient here. Big resistance at 625. I'm looking for that one more retest I'm just giving it time now. I want to trade with smaller size just to get, get comfortable. We're finding a little bit of support here. But bigger support around 580, so I might go ahead and cut this one. If we can get a bit of a higher move here, I would like to, boom, small profit. I think this might keep selling off, but the power behind it made me feel like it was going to pop a little bit higher than where I had that limit order, so a bit of a scratch, but I'll take a small scratch, that's fine. I would really like to see that area around 5.8, 5.79. Five, so it basically means cracking VWAP a little bit, kind of hanging out below VWAP. Um, just like how we did, or below 9 EMA, just like we did here before we had to move back higher. So that's what I'm looking for. This ticker, when it's done, does get kind of nasty. So I do want to be a bit careful there. That's why I'm trading smaller size. Yeah, just, it's just too risky in this area. And right now, it's still extended even after that sell-off. I, I would really be looking for something close to 5.79. CNTX got halted on the way up. 13% move there. Problem with CNTX is when you look to your left, you just see you know that one big green spike and then just sells, sells off and gives back all of it. So I feel like with CNTX, it just makes me really uncomfortable trading that one. That's basically how everything looked pre-market. Pre-market was so hard today, it's just disaster. You either had to get really aggressive on that first green candle and then, and then the move was over. So you just you know, take profits and get away. I did the opposite. I, I was trading the you know, that first pullback and just one after another failed. 
All right, I think I'm gonna do my recap video. I'm just gonna get started with it. Um, ABUS has been riding this 9 EMA like a freaking champ. You could have been scalping the heck out of this. Each little bounce is like 3%, so that's really nice. But I was waiting for a bit more of a five minute reversal or a retrace back to like 5.8. Um, something that was a little bit more of a good risk reward pullback. The problem with uh, ABUS uh, pre-market, it was it was tough to trade because the pullbacks on it were just really devastating. Um, here's a pullback and then just you know sells off, and I kept on trying to get a little reversal here. Actually ended up making money, but you know never ended up happening. And I don't know, it's 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 tough to trade in this area, and I just feel like you know I'm risking like a 10% flush for. I don't know, maybe a retest of high. So I just, I'm having a hard time getting long on this ticker at the moment. We'll get started with ABUS, then I'll go over my, my day trading recap, and then, yeah, a little unorthodox today, but it is what it is. So ABUS, uh, you know, this is a ticker we've traded many times in the past. It's a biotech, which makes me always a little bit weary, especially at this time, because I feel like offerings are just, it's not like if, it's just more like when. But ABUS did actually hold the highs really well, around five, five, actually, that's not true, around four or five. So right around here, it held its highs really well, pretty much most of the morning and now it's ripping up again maybe we're going to run to eight dollars that's what i'm looking at and if we could run to uh, past eight i'll be looking at something like 10. i am trading a little bit later again today mainly because maybe it was um i was red i am red on the or actually i'm green on the day now i'm up 58 dollars. i was red on the day for most of pre-market i was up like 700 dollars, and then in one trade on op i gave it all back um, and then I was down like on OP, like over a thousand dollars at one point. I made that back a little bit. Um, but you know, these two tickers just nailed me, um, pretty good right away. And then I was like, oh, that sucks. And the ABUS was the ticker that allowed me to kind of crawl out of the hole a little bit. Um, so kind of a bumpy start to December for me. And just in terms of running PNL, you know, just all over the place, a little, not that, you know, nice, consistent, uh, climbing that, that we, we like to see. So ABUS on, on the, um, on the intraday. Yeah, this was, this is just one of those tickers that, you know, once it sells off and you notice a little bit of com accumulation, you can either buy into these support zones, which, you know, would have actually ended up working pretty well or start getting aggressive when it starts trailing near, um, near breakout zones, like four, three, former high, or at least uh, this was a close on this candle. I guess the real high was more like four, um, four, seven or something like that. Um, but look at that, that breakout was really the, where the money was at. And I was trying to get this breakout, but look at here, I closed right into this uh, move um, kind of missing that whole run. I tried to trade a little bit higher, but it kept on selling off. And that's kind of what happened again. You know, right when we were approaching those former breakout zones right around here at 5.5, five, that's really when we had that big crack. Unfortunately, I never really ended up getting any breakouts. I'm devastating. So I don't know, lately my trading really has just not been that great. I, I've said that several times and we'll do, we'll go much deeper in my stats in the day trading recap or the monthly recap that's gonna be coming out hopefully this week, if not this week, maybe this weekend even because um, I'm waiting for a big update on Trade Journal where we're gonna see um, when is my best time to trade, when is my best day to trade, when has been my best month. And there's, there's a few more charts coming out. So I'm waiting for that to do the uh, monthly recap video. And before we talk about the next tickers, I do wanna share something kind of exciting here uh, with you guys that I posted in the Discord earlier. Basically, I've been covering a lot of Lava Runners and Pesky Penguins and other Solana NFT projects and just been coming out with a lot of uh, Solana videos. And over the last weeks, um, and some of you guys already know, I've been digging a lot more into how to build a mint and how, you know everything that goes into it. At first, it was a little bit more like investor research, me trying to understand the Solana platform. And then I was like, oh man, this is, you know, we could do some pretty fun stuff here. Um, I even uh, set up a site uh, on localhost, a minting site, and did a, a total test mint already on the DevNet, and that worked really, really well. So what I was thinking is I want to come out with more videos on Solana and NFTs and crypto, but I want to kind of make it fun and something we could all do together. And that's why I was thinking we do a fun little NFT project together. Basically, a free mint that is totally community driven. One thing I would definitely need is a UX and an NFT designer for sure, because, you know, I could code and stuff, and I've designed all the trade journal i've designed many different sites i've designed dozens of sites the problem is my 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 designing is like let me get some bootstrap and just you know throw up the bare necessity i have a hard time making like a really really nice site or yeah i, I don't know what's a really nice site i would just say like a really interactive site i can make a clean site but look at dgen uh, ape academy i mean look at this they have the password right here dgen69 and then you can get access to your so you can connect your solana wallet and other things and you know this is just a really nice interactive website it looks really good i mean i could probably pull this off if i spend you know an unnecessary amount of time on it but i just don't have that amount of time in my hand so i could get like a really simple project going but i would love definitely a ux designer and an nft designer so somebody that's really good at designing i don't know um, something on photoshop or or wherever you guys
guys do that. We're already getting some positive feedback here from Kuda. Hell yeah, man, that sounds like fun. Um, John over here says totally down. So that's what I like to see, a little bit of community driven. And um, I, got a, I got a good idea already for what the project could be called. I'll probably throw up a poll or something similar. But again, just like Lava Runners for me personally and Pesky Penguins, those are two communities I feel like, you know, I really wanted to dive into to see how much I learn, not necessarily to make money. And that's kind of what I want this project to be, but a little bit more technical based. So we can all learn together what, what really is behind a lot of these NFT launches and what it looks like. So it's not just a big mystery box um, like it was to me, you know, a month and a half ago. Anyway, that was a little bit of a side tangent. If you want to learn more, just go to the Discord on the NFT section, and that's where we're going to be talking about it. Let's get back to talking about the gappers. And the next one I want to talk about is OP, the ticker I'm down the most. Uh, unfortunately, um, this ticker just had a nasty flush here. This is just, ugh. Uh, OP was oh, it was a weird one. Um, let's actually go to the daily first. Now this was a recent uplist. At first I thought it was an uh, IPO, but it was an uplist. It was on the OTC markets, um, so it's came out, so it's came up from pretty much nothing, which makes you a little bit hesitant to want to trade it because you know it's really really high right now. Market cap almost a billion dollars. So that's really really crazy. Um, 88 million shares outstanding. They do have some catalysts here, but I wasn't you know super super interested in any of that. Um, let's go back to the price action. Uh, on the five minute, and remember guys, I've been using the five minute now on my second screen. I feel like it really helped me today. Uh, unfortunately, we just had really bad price action today. Yesterday was really tough to trade. Today was way, way, way more tough to trade. We just got like really quick um, runs to the upside and all of a sudden, you know, the ticker was dead. So just like here on CNTX, look at this big spike to the upside and then it was dead. Here with APS, a um, big, big spike to the upside and then it was pretty much fading really quickly. Same with OP. I mean, this one had a decent little front side here, but eventually just faded pretty quick. Uh, TOMZ, this particular has just been pulling back ever since TOS opened at 7 a.m. So like that was pre-market today and that's why I was giving back so much profit because I was, you know, I was edging into that first pullback or, you know, that first five minute pullback and ready for a continuation. We just didn't see any of that across the board. And that's why I really fumbled today really, really hard. And I'm pretty happy the fact that I'm ending the day green. I did not think I was going to end the day green, but I was kind of sticking around a little bit longer. I was talking on Discord. I was doing some NFT work and I was just kind of watching the charts, at least my five minute charts. And then when I saw ABUS pop up again, I was like, let me trade this front side a little bit more. And that got me in the green. I think I was down like 450 right before I started trading ABUS again around 11 a.m. Right now it's 12 a.m. to 12, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So definitely way longer than I'm usually day trading for sure. If you're new, my usual time is from seven to 10 a.m. And after that, I'm, I'm pretty much always done. Sometimes I'm even done at like 8 a.m. Once I get in like a nice front side move, I'll just be like, you know what? That's more than I can ask for. Let me just, you know, bag it and, and walk away. Um, yeah, so with OP, I don't know. I'm really not too much of a big fan. I, like there was a few good like pullbacks and continuations here, and that's really where I should have milked it. I should have been more aggressive pre-market on that setup, especially when we are on this new front side. Um, lo and behold, I kind of try to trade uh, some of this like light action here, and this was really bad. Um, I gave back like all of my profit and then some on this move here where we bought this pullback, and I was looking for continuation, and I didn't cut out quick enough. This was like the one time I didn't stop my cut my losses quick enough. I took like an 8% loss there on like a $15,000 position size. So just like that, I was pretty back to the red on the day. And, you know, that was kind of depressing. And then I tried to do a few scalp trades here, um, looking for that, you know, reversal. Um, look at this. I buy here and I sell at the perfect low or almost at the perfect low right here. And then it bounces up 7%. And then guess what? I do that literally again. I buy here into this red candle and then I sell somewhere at 877. Um, right before it runs up 13%. So twice I gave back um, so much for no reason. I just missed those bounces by like hairs and that was really frustrating. Uh, and then the market opened on OP. The frustration continued a little bit. I got a partial uh, fill here and then I sold into this breakout. So I finally had a good trade and then it pulled back and I was I started accumulating here full size and then it flushed down here, it got halted, it opened up and I just quickly closed my position. So it, this was just a really frustrating ticker for me to trade. And honestly, once I was kind of like back to break even after this trade, I should have just walked away because this was a ticker that we talked about this yesterday a lot that sometimes there's tickers that just don't work out very well. And it's better to leave them. Otherwise, you just dig it deeper and deeper and deeper hole. OP was definitely one of those tickers. So I should have stopped trading this ticker the second I was back break even on it, but I kept on trading it. And that's why I went down. I should have just been focused on something like ABUS or something that was working out a little bit better for me. And I guarantee you, I would have been um, really nicely in the green today for sure. Uh, anywho, let's go to BRTX. 
Um, this one was a really short-lived ticker, really not a lot to talk about. You can see on the daily, it's you know kind of had this big spike to the upside, and you know now it's really consolidating around five dollars. Um, five minute, you can see how it spiked up here, and then um, yeah, this is this is just one of those classic um, pre-market tickers we had today, where you know I try to size in on that first pullback. Um, and it just doesn't work and then it just keeps on selling off and yeah that that's pretty much the summary of everything we were seeing today and it was just getting really really frustrating so BRTX was a total nonsense uh, trade clove is actually a covered call I have um, I'm trying to sell a covered call right now at a higher limit order um, actually you know you can go to these covered calls limit orders and it's kind of interesting let's actually quickly do it so here I'm trying to sell 30 shares this is a really high limit order. I just put it here because I didn't want to sell my covered calls on this one just yet. I kind of wanted to place a limit order and see um, if we were going to get a little bit more continuation on Clove today. I don't really think it happened. Um, but yeah, here's the limit order or order book on um, selling covered calls. So you can see it. It works exactly the same as you know trying to trade a stock. And this is basically your premium right here. This is the how much premium you can get if you're selling it or how much premium it costs if you want to buy the covered calls. So it's kind of like a little interesting chart to see how it works. Uh, this is going to cancel at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, it's not really anything worth talking about. But if you've never seen how the order book looks on you know covered calls or options, this is exactly how it looks right here. Uh, moving up to AUVI. Yeah, this is just another one of those tickers that you know popped up really quickly and then ended up selling off. You can see on the daily, it's just been a continuous downtrend, stuck under $6. Um, uh, on the five minute, you can see we broke above $5, but we were not able to hold that. And guess where I'm trading this one? I'm trading that first major. Actually, this is kind of like the second or third major pullback, so a little bit late, um, and we didn't get continuation. And luckily, I just stopped out of this one, took my little profits, and left. Um, LMDX, kind of a similar story, except LMDX. This one, this one was a little bit crazy because just how fast it was moving. Um, on the daily, this is just chop central. It's already back to where it started yes or where it ended yesterday. So. Um, just an ugly, ugly experience here on this ticker. Um, anyway, quick, quick one side, uh, one minute front side, and you know three candles, and then it pulls back like 20%. I start accumulating, it gets a pop here up. I just close it because at this point I'm realizing, man, none of these are working out. So I was already done on LMDX. Luckily, you know I made some profit on that one uh, for once, and yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, back to ABUS really quickly here. Look at that, on the five minutes finding big support. So this could be a decent little spot to trade it. My problem with ABUS though is once it, it finishes its front side move, it sells off so continuously and so nasty that it's almost not even uh, worth trading anymore. Maybe you can get some scalps on it, but you know, backside scalps is just one of those things where it's a negative risk reward. So it, it, it's been a tough strategy for me lately. There was a time where trading backside was my bread and butter. I would always milk it on backside. Lately, I don't know if it's me or the tickers, but just trading backside has not been working for me at all. Um, so it's kind of better just to kind of leave it at this point. Uh, because you know what, what are you trying to do? You're, if you're trading backside right now, you'd be trying to get like maybe a pop back to the 9 EMA, try to squeeze out one or two percent, but you're always risking that you know bigger flush, five percent, ten percent. So it's just one of those things that um, you got to be really quick with, and you really only want to be doing backsides near really big support, um, so you can at least have that working for you. Otherwise, you don't want to just blindly be buying the backside because those can just keep on selling off and brr, just give me the chivers just looking at it. All right, so I'm pretty happy here. I mean, yeah, a slight little green day, I guess. Total scratch day is, is really what it is, but so much better than a red day. Uh, yesterday we had a red day, um, which was not a fun way to end the month. Definitely was a blow to my overall P&L uh, for the month. So unnecessary too, because we were green yesterday in the beginning, but then I just gave back all my profits, and that happened to me again uh, today. So. Oh, I really got to get back into the uh, groove of things. I don't I don't know why. I've been so sloppy. So guys, don't forget to drop a like on the way out. I really do appreciate it. Definitely join that Discord and join the NFT section if you want to learn more and get involved in the project because this is going to be totally community-based and we're really looking to just learn together just like we do with everything else from you know day trading, uh, small caps, swing trading, uh, selling covered calls. We're all learning together and we're all getting better every single day together. And that's what I want to do with the NFT thing. So join the Discord, subscribe if you're new, and don't forget to drop a like on the way out. I'll see you guys then first thing tomorrow morning. Like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.